Welcome to the third video in our introductory series, Why Are the Pleiaren Here? We've seen Pleiaren beamships in Billy's spectacular photos and 8mm films. They have presented physical evidence of their existence in the form of metal samples and sound recordings of their ships. And anyone can read what they have said in their conversation with Billy in the contact reports. With all of this overwhelming evidence, it should be obvious to any thinking person that an extraterrestrial race is and has been visiting the Earth. So, you might wonder, why are they here? The Pleiaren are on a mission to provide advice and guidance to the people of Earth. They have very specific reasons for being here. Let's explore some of these reasons. Reason 1 the Pleiaren are here to present a series of facts about the history of our society on Earth. Part of this history is about extraterrestrial visitors of the past. We only need to examine Earth history and its ancient records to see that they provide an overwhelming account of extraterrestrial visitors. In today's popular culture, these visitors are also called ancient astronauts. Thousands of years ago, extraterrestrials visited the Earth and interacted with the Earth humans of that time. Although they did teach the Earth people valuable skills, some of these ET visitors succumbed to greed and tyranny and established themselves as gods to create an ideological and religious environment for the sole purpose of subjugating and exploiting Earth humans. As many of you know, Earth humans have worshipped a multitude of gods for thousands of years, including Osiris, Isis, Set, Zeus, Poseidon, Apollo, Vishnu, Jesus, and many, many others. At least here on Earth, the development of belief and faith are based on fear of the unknown and fear of death. Another reason for the belief in a God is because people simply wish to have a higher power over them so they can be relieved of all responsibility. The development of belief in a God or gods is a natural process when human life forms begin to develop on a planet. Before developing any reasoning or rationality, New civilizations don't have any understanding of how things work in the world and attempt to explain it by creating a god or gods. This is a normal and natural process. However, the time for abandoning this belief is long overdue on the earth. Every aspect of spiritual evolution is blocked by religions, making any genuine progress impossible. Therefore, to make any real evolutive progress, everyone must learn to clear away any and all deep-rooted religious beliefs and dogma that have been indoctrinated in us for thousands of years. The ability to free ourselves from this mental captivity rests within each human and can only be achieved through one's own thinking, investigative work, and truth-finding within oneself. Reason 2 To teach the people of Earth that heaven and hell don't exist in a religious sense. Heaven and hell are conditions of our psyche and our state of consciousness. These inner states of heaven or hell are created through our own thoughts and the resulting feelings. Heaven and hell are not physical or ethereal locations of everlasting pain or paradise. There is no purgatory and eternal damnation where a devil or Satan resides. There are no angels, archangels, demons, or devils. These concepts of heaven and hell, purgatory, and eternal damnation are fear-based methods of control used to make followers fearful and obedient slaves of faith. Reason 3 
to teach the people of Earth that throughout the entire universe, there exists only one creation, which is also called the universal consciousness. The creation is neither a god in the shape of a human being or a highly evolved material being that has created heaven and earth and watches over human beings and tells them what to do. The creation is a natural spirit energy form based on causal evolution, out of which the causal and evolution related creational natural laws and recommendations are given. The creation and its natural laws and recommendations are neutral positive balanced and therefore neither the negative nor the positive predominates in any way. The creation is completely balanced and as a result neither good nor evil exists in it, only a neutral balance. The creation energy form accumulates its knowledge and wisdom continuously in a spirit energetical way by gathering in itself evolution-related processes and results from the entire contents of the universe and human beings as well as from all other life forms as energetical knowledge and energetical wisdom. Thereby, the creation grows cumulatively as a spirit energy form until it reaches its highest possible energy form. When this state is reached, and after the universe completes its expansion and contraction cycle, the creation slumbers for an extended period of time, only to reawaken and start a new cycle. The creation is a natural production of its own evolution, just like human beings and all other living creatures in the entire universe. The creation is formed much higher in its evolutive energy, above all material beings, and thereby exists immeasurably higher over human beings as a pure spirit energy level. Because of this, it would be impossible for the creation to communicate in any way with a human being. The creation is a pure energy form without personality and subject to causal evolution and is alone in its existence as an independent, natural, and evolutive energetical form. Reason 4 To warn the people of Earth about overpopulation. As of the making of this video, the Earth is home for more than 9 billion people. Because of the overpopulation, all of the people on Earth are subjected to energy shortages, famines, environmental pollution, hazardous waste, destruction of the rainforests, global warming, water shortages, water pollution, hatred towards immigrants, and many, many other things. The Earth is able to support 529 million people in abundance and without any problems, along with all flora and fauna, so that all of nature and humans can live in peace and prosperity. However, because the Earth is more than 17 times overpopulated, we are forced to increase food production beyond its normal measure through the use of chemicals and fertilizers, which end up polluting the rivers and oceans. Because of overpopulation, more factories are built to produce goods, and these factories dump chemicals and other byproducts into the air and water. More cars are on the road, and more rainforests are cut down. As more people inhabit the earth, clean water becomes more scarce, and because of the increased CO2 and methane emissions, the earth is warming. Essentially, all of our environmental problems are symptoms and not the actual cause. The root cause is overpopulation. It would surely be helpful if all the environmental activists would focus on the actual cause of the problem, overpopulation, and not the individual symptoms like global warming, environmental pollution, energy shortages, food shortages, water shortages, and immigration problems. All of these problems are a direct result of overpopulation.
To address the problem of overpopulation, the Plierin recommend we enact a controlled worldwide birth stop in seven year intervals. For seven years, there should be no births worldwide. Then, there is a one year period for births with permission, followed by another seven year birth stop. This cycle continues until a normal worldwide population level is achieved. Reason 5 To teach the people of Earth that belief and faith are illusions created by man and don't represent anything true about life. The country and culture we are born into is directly connected to the belief we are indoctrinated into. For example, if you were born in India, your belief is probably Hindu. If you were born in Pakistan, your belief is probably Muslim. If you were born in the U.S., your belief is probably Christian. For most people, belief and faith are handed down from parents, grandparents, relatives, teachers, and religious leaders. In the name of love and wanting the best for their children, Parents and grandparents indoctrinate their children into faith and belief. This behavior is completely understandable from the parents' point of view, even though their actions are based in belief. They want to protect us from the devil and make sure we don't go to hell. The problem is, this belief indoctrination is so total and complete and is hammered into us over our entire life that it's almost impossible to free ourselves from it. Only a very few people manage to free themselves from faith and belief over their lifetime. People who are under the immense power of belief and faith are deprived of their intellect, reason, and logic and are no longer able to think freely. Many people are afraid to leave religious institutions because the divine punishment of burning in hell has been hammered into them over their lifetime which creates an inner fear that is very powerful and very difficult to get rid of. Reason 6 To tell the people of Earth that they must learn to bear their own responsibility and act consciously in a progressive manner. It is imperative that the individual always bears their own responsibility for each and every thought, action, emotion, and perception. Each individual must work on themselves and become a real human being. When an individual becomes a decent, rational, and responsible person, the results rub off on the next person who may also become more decent, rational, and responsible, then in turn conveying these attributes to more people and so on. Humanity cannot be changed for the better. It's the individual who must change. Reason 7 To teach the people of Earth the creational laws and recommendations. These laws and recommendations are universally valid. This means they are valid here on Earth as well as on every other planet, solar system, and galaxy in the entire universe. Some examples of these laws are the law of contrariness. In simple terms, this means the law of contrast, or the law of opposites. This law is evident in simple things such as day and night, or the blowing or the stillness of the wind. It can be seen in love and hatred, or in war and peace. The law of contrast can also be experienced in our thoughts, where we have both negative and positive thoughts. This also extends to our feelings, which can also be positive and negative. After closer observation and some careful consideration, the law of contrast can be recognized as an interaction between two contrary factors. In simple terms, we can say the negative and the positive. This contrary interaction between the negative and the positive forms something new, a product or a result through the interaction. And this result is either negative or positive, 
and then another contrary factor will come into play. This interaction between two contrary factors, or the law of contrariness, is active throughout our entire lives and is the main factor of our conscious evolution. The Law of Causality In simple terms, this means the law of cause and effect. Every action we take is followed by a consequence. Every word we speak has an effect. Every thought we think has a consequence. The law of contrariness is connected to the law of causality in that contrary factors in life are presented to us where we then can make our own free will decision, which through our decision process, the law of causality is applied. The law of becoming and passing away. It's very easy to see the law of becoming and passing away in our everyday life. In simple terms, it's a cycle. A day turns into night and then into day again. We go to sleep and we wake up. In the spring, everything blooms and begins to grow. In the summer, everything in nature is in full growth. Then in the fall, the trees lose their leaves and the grass stops growing. In the winter, nature is dormant, animals hibernate, and the birds migrate. Then everything begins anew in spring. The earth moves around the sun and the sun moves through the galaxy. Everything in the entire universe is in a cycle and follows the law of becoming and passing away. All of these laws and recommendations are not demands from the creation. No one is forced or coerced to follow them. They are simply recommendations that each person can decide for themselves if they wish to follow them or not. These are just seven of the reasons the Pleiaren are visiting the Earth and are in contact with Billy. It's really unfortunate that their advice is ignored by the majority of Earth's population. Hopefully, as time goes on, more people will learn about the messages from the Pleiaren and begin to follow their advice. Thank you for joining me on this episode about why the Pleiaren are here, and I'll see you in the next video.